Hi guys, I'm going to dive right into this scripture, but um, I titled this one, Are You Out of Your Mind? You Should Be. Um, I'm going to go to a Philippians 2, it's a popular scripture, but let's go to 2 3. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind. Let each of you, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And then the rest of it's great. And honestly, guys, some people take off of that scripture. Thought of not robbery to be equal with God. And that's all awesome and great. But the end of it was in the form of a servant, even unto death. A lot of this hype and stuff that's going on in the church is about selfish ambition and conceit and not the servanthood. It's about what they can get, what you can get. Not wanting to take on that, not even humbling themselves to be servants. That's why it says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So, go to Corinthians 1.18 for the foolishness of the cross, for the preaching of the cross. For the preaching of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but it is the power of life of God, life eternal to those that believe. So, it's time to just get out because the other day I was just sitting in prayer and Jesus spoke to me and said, why are you eating so much garbage? I was like, okay, God, why is the church portraying so much garbage? We're feeding people a bunch of trash. It's kind of got all twisted up into something it's not. That's why you need to be out of your mind and in the mind of Christ. Who's your source, guys? Where are you getting your information from? It should be God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and His Word. If it's coming from somewhere else, I'd be a little sub subjective of it. The Internet's full of it. The world's full of it. Um, also recently, and I've got the videos out on the videos are out on it, Nothing to do with me in the video. I'm just the directional guy. But it was out of Isaiah 27. I started noticing this about six months ago, how the enemy was coming against people in the natural, the body of Christ, and now the world too, and now our country. Um, but it's been going on for a while. But I just, it was the subtlety of it, of the natural. Breakdowns of cars, careers, finances, health. Um, just drugs, all, kids on drugs, all kinds of different natural things. Demonic influence behind them, of course, but natural. Even this computer, guys, that I'm on right now on a camera. Three months ago, it crashed. It started flickering, and, and so then I just, I didn't take it in, and finally when it just crashed, it cratered. Well, it was, I didn't even have it six months. Sent it in for warranty company said oh three or four different technicians looked at it even the manufacturer looked at it. oh can't cover it under warranty you spilled something on it you destroyed it everything's toast well, motherboard to everything okay how much is it to fix $720 well that's a good deal because I paid $400 for the computer so you know I'll take two of them Let's just send it back so they did two months guys lord what do I do prayed over it week went by Tell him, tell me what to do. I did everything he told me to do. It worked for about two or three days. Worked great. Then I quit. Then two months, praying over it, doing different things to it, plugging it in. God, what do I do? God, what do I do? It's fine now, guys. I'm on it right now. I've called customer support for, for Dell, and two or three times we've checked everything we've gone through programs we've done all, everything's fine it works great it actually works better than it did when i first bought it honestly when i first bought it brand new 
it's faster. It was real slow when I bought it. I was like, man, they just bought this computer and it's slow. Of course, what do you expect for 400 bucks? But still, you still want something to work. But anyhow, so it was through the natural. So, but now here I am. But this was the scripture that the Lord gave me. Isaiah 27. I'm going to cut the head of that twisted serpent, that Leviathan spirit off. Because everything's twisted, seemingly in this world, in the church. Jesus has been whitewashed in the blood of the Lamb. Is pulled out. People don't even talk about the gospel hardly anymore. They don't bring their Bibles to church. They don't. It's all about stuff. And buildings. Yesterday we went to a meeting at a homeless shelter in Dallas. I do it once a year, and it was a good. It was just a bunch of different Christian people that got together through the pastor that's down there. One of the guys, I don't think you'll mind, I might say his name, but one of the guys down there radically was saved. And this was part of his message. He said, God didn't meet me in a building. He met me behind a dumpster. That's what I'm saying, guys, out of your mind. Behind a dumpster. But if you know the guy and if you ever talked to him and if you ever met him and you try the spirit to see if it's the spirit of the Lord, it's pretty awesome. Got a great testimony. Great man of God. A little different. Are you out of your mind? And all this, I'm not trying to politicize it, but all this garbage, guys. Everything, everybody's mad. People are mad now on the news and preachers and both sides and just crazy stuff. They're already out of their mind. It's time to get the mind of Christ. Quick, getting all this garbage. The internet's full of it too, guys. See it all the time, all kinds of pop-ups. Crazy stuff. Still about, I mean, I mean, stupid stuff, guys. Like insult your intelligence. Where do people come up with this hogwash? And it's just to chipping away. But back to what I was talking about, about the natural. Well, I'm still talking about it, but. The Garden of Eden. It was a tree, guys. It was fruit. And it looked good to the ears. But that's why the Bible says, He that had an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. They weren't. They heard what God said, but they weren't taking it to heart, to their mind. They weren't keeping it up there to keep it in here, into their heart. Jesus, at the Garden of Shemini, Tempted by the enemy. Turn these stones into bread. Well, he was in the in there for 40 days. He was fasting. He was hungry, probably. Food. Throw yourself off this pinnacle. Well, the fear of losing your life. You're going to die, crash, burn. Why would anybody want to throw themselves off of a building? You can have all these riches of this kingdom. That was the third one. The lust of the flesh, the pride of life, the riches and glory and fame. Everybody's trying to build a house, build a bigger building, build a, build a bigger, grander, grandiose, mega stuff. Where's the house, guys? Lean not on your own understanding. Proverbs 3, 4, and 5. Lean not on your own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all your might. Lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways and he'll direct your paths. Get out of your mind, guys, and get the mind of Christ. And all this distracted, divisive, twisted up. Everybody's like, they don't know the truth. Yes, you do. This is what I'm going to end with. I was in prayer. Jesus was standing right before me, guys. And it was loud, but it wasn't. It was with great authority. But it was almost like yelling, but not. It wasn't yelling, but it was just really loud. And he said, 
My name is Jesus. And at the sound of my name, every knee will bow. Time to get out of our mind, guys, and out of this twisted up, self-ambitious, selfish knowledge. You know, they call it fake news. Well, it's fake news of the gospel, guys. It's all twisted up, distorted. Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost is taken out of it. Jesus is taken out of the equation. God's even taken out of the equation in a lot of it. It's not, it's not church and churches anymore, guys. It's a bunch of, might as well be a, a club. That's why it's going to be one in the street. Doesn't make any sense. Not in our own mind. Not what we think. Not how we want to. We want to create God in this atmosphere and these things and these places and stuff. He created us, guys. We didn't. We don't get to create Him. Time to get out of your mind. Who's your source? That's why that secret place is so important. I'm not abdicating that everybody should leave the church. That's not what I'm saying. And not gather together. That's not what I'm saying because that's scriptural too. But if you don't have anything, if you're not on fire and burning with the Holy Ghost and with His mind, when you gather together, you're just a burning ember. There's nothing there. So guess what? When we gather together and we're on fire and we've got something in our secret place and we've really got Jesus. Then it becomes a forest fire, guys. Then it becomes a city set upon a hill. But when it's all this nonsense and stuff and polluted, diluted garbage, whether it's coming from the world or from the pulpit. Sorry, guys. I know this is not a warm, fuzzy feeling message, and I'm not, you know, it's not me. Can't do it. Won't do it anymore. I'm not going to even try. But he took on the form of a servant because of his love for all. Because he wanted to serve all of mankind, to set everybody free. It is about his love and his grace and his mercy and his truth. And not all this other nonsense that the enemy tries to throw up as roadblocks and put in our mind and pollute and dilute and twist and contort and... vying for your attention. He can't do it through the Spirit because he knows he's lost. He can do it through the natural, the things that annoy us, traffic, um, cell phones. Uh, that's the other thing. We got, you know, all these idols. Cell phones are big one, guys. Computers are a big one, guys. Social media is a big one, guys. The almighty dollar is a big one, guys. Bunch of stuff that just distracting and divisive and just twisting us from the truth. And that's why he said, let this behind me and you, which is also in Christ Jesus. But the first part of it is don't, not that selfish, ambitious. Read James. Read James 3. 317 is, is great. The wisdom from above. Verse peaceable, gentle, meek, without hypocrisy. But 3, through 3, 1 through 16 it's about all kinds of self, selfish wills, ambitions, and drives, and stuff, and things, and distractive, divisive, distractive garbage. Time to take out the garbage, guys. And let this mind be in you. Get out of our mind. Get out of your mind. It's no good anyhow. It's for mine too, guys. I'm not, you know, I'm not. I'm not the judge, jury, and executioner here, guys. I got to serve the same Jesus. I got to serve the same God that, as you. I got to get it right, too. I don't get a free pass. Just because he gave me some words and some visions and some scriptures and even two books and a bunch more that I'm writing. It's like, man, it had nothing to do with that. I'm just a directional guy. 
what we all have a purpose. It comes out of Matthew 20, guys. That's that's I'm gonna end with this. Just read your Bible, guys. Pray, seek God. Turn, my people who are called from my, by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn, turn from their wicked ways. Matthew 20 is all about the equality, guys. Your purpose. Get out of this mind. If you can't only steal away for a little bit of time, it's hard when you've got kids and jobs and things going on. Of course, I get it. But every opportunity you get, steal away. It's imperative you get out of your mind, insulate it. You can, you know, insulate it as much as possible. So that he that had an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit has to say unto the church. The wind blows and listens. You don't even know where it's coming from, where it's going. That's the Spirit. So is the Spirit. Time to get in the flow. The flowing, not the knowing. Our mind, we want plans, preparations, things, everything in order so we can put God in a box so we can create this something that's not. Like I said, we don't get to create Him and experience and God in a box. I call it Captain Crunch Christianity, but anyhow, that's another, that's on Instagram, but... Our Hollywood Christianity. We don't get to create him. He created us. For his purpose, his will, his glory. That's the book. The second book that just came out. Jesus, Christ in you, the hope of glory. It's on Amazon, guys. Get it. If you can't afford it, just email me. At Jesus is alive in America. Google Jesus is alive in America and we'll come up. I don't want to do any of that because of... I see all this Hollywood sit, Christianity, sensationalism, and blah, 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 blah. Lights, cameras, action type stuff. Like I said at the beginning, God met this preacher at a dumpster, behind a dumpster. Dirtiest place you can think of, full of trash, stinky stuff. That's our lives, guys. He meets us in our darkest, deepest, broken places. Not in all this pious, self-righteous, egotistical, selfish stuff. Because the enemy's using that to distract us, guys, from what God wants. Well, it's time to get out of our mind, lay that aside, set it aside. The only reason, I mean, I don't like it. I don't even want to bring it up. I'm like, man, I feel like I'm harping on it, kind of. Probably am, but what I'm trying to do is just break that cycle. Let you guys hear with an ear. You know, we all want to see. We all want signs and wonders. What about hearing? What the Spirit has to say into the church. What about getting it in your mind so you can get it in your heart? That's why I said, time to get out of your mind. Are you out of your mind? I am. I want to be even more out of my mind. doesn't make sense. It's not supposed to make sense, guys, to the flesh and to the natural self. Never was intended to. God's not in a box. God's not back in the ark. He's in us. We're his house. The whole dispensation changed with Jesus. That's why I put that book out, Christ in You, the Hope of Glory. We're His glory and His story and His feet. That's what He told me last, and His feet. So I got to study on His feet. I'm still studying on that. But we all have a story. We all have a purpose. We all have a... And it may look a little different. The guy that got... The guy, the preacher that got saved behind a dumpster. Met God behind a dumpster. 
not of some polished fancy building or a revival or a move of God or a, a dumpster, guys. Anyhow, I'm going to end with that. Love you guys. Are you out of your mind? Time to be. So, anyhow, we love you guys. Uh, just like I said, Google, Jesus is alive in America. Um, just, uh, it's a little messy, guys, and I apologize for that. I am not the social media guy, but that's what the Lord told me to do. I'm trying to clean it up as best I can and fix things, but I'm doing it on an A, a shoestring budget, and B, technically illiterate budget, kind of, you know. So, anyhow, my computer skills are very lacking. So if anybody out there wants to help, email me. I could use a lot of computer help. So, anyhow, um, or come be a part of us, 2929 Hickory Street, downtown Dallas, any, time, any Sunday night at 4 o'clock. It's a homeless shelter. Come down, start with that. Come see what we're about, where our heart's really at, for the broken. So, love you guys. Uh, talk to you soon. Well, I do want to say this one last thing. God dwells in your brokenness. That's out of your mind. He lives in your brokenness. That's what he told me. He's there. Peter denying Christ three times. Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. Daniel. Paul when he was Saul. Joseph when he was in prison. Esther. Mary, Jesus' mother, watching him brutally murdered. Pick one, any of them. Brokenness. Job, of course, the big one. It's David. What really got to me was when, at the end when he said, even my own son, who is broken for mankind, for our sins. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. God was broken, brokenhearted in it too, guys. And to watch his son carry all of our garbage back to the dumpster full of trash. Life's full of trash, messy, stinky. But there's Jesus in the midst. So anyhow, we love you guys. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, please share these videos with others. Uh, blog with us. Help me get this social media stuff kind of figured out. I don't like it. But it's what the Lord told me to do. So please help me if you feel it in your heart. Try the Spirit, see if it's the Spirit of the Lord. Come down and see us. Feedback, share these videos. Just help us, God. Love you guys. Uh, talk to you soon.